Hollywood is Missy Chunk Press. We are here at Backstage in New York and we are with me from Open
can testify to that, that it's, uh, it's definitely a uh, pop evil, it's uh, definitely a live experience. And once you do that, you know, I mean, that's when prayers are made. And yeah. uh, we'll be back to Germany many more, many, many more, many more times and albums to come. So. I hope too. Well, yeah. thank you. Right? We're excited about it. But yeah. culture's great, man. A chance to see Germany. I got lost on the subway today. Really? So that was cool. On the bus, I took the wrong turn. That I just didn't know how to read German. <laughs> So I just, I got on bus 62 and headed down to try to get to the gallery or the mall and I realized I was going east instead of west or west instead of east. By the time I came back, I didn't want to be late for the interview, so mall will have to wait. It's all good, so yeah. So that was my trip to Munich today, so I didn't get to see as much as I wanted. But I had some good German food today, amazing. Catering's been amazing today. Okay. Um, just the culture, it's, it's exciting. I think that's fun. The, the, the part, I think that's part of the aura of touring in Europe is, is being able to see the culture, meet new people, make new friends here, as well as you know doing all that with music. And it's a special opportunity to play overseas. And um, it's definitely we, it's definitely something we don't take for granted. And we're very blessed to be here, and um, we're excited to keep bringing it. Yeah, do you have time for Sat We haven't had, we had more time for Sat when we toured with Five Finger, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, we're, I think this is our fourth day in Germany. Yeah, well, I think it took two days for us to just get the jet lag out. I think we were just sleeping until, I think yesterday I slept till 6 p.m. So I slept okay. till like three hours before the show, so I didn't have time to do much. But I think we've been going, to, we've been staying up real late just because that's normal time back home, you know, so we couldn't sleep. But I think finally now we're starting to dial it in. And, get back to the uh, time change and the time difference and uh, hopefully I'm yeah, in Paris for three days so hopefully we can get a little more time in Paris and then London to finish up the tour in London and hopefully spend some more time then and there but um, you know hopefully that's part of meeting um, the friends we've met here in Germany hopefully as we come we continue to see more of the culture and get to see more of the, uh, the fun things you know so I wanted to see the Disney castle it's twice now I've missed it Yes, yes, I want to see that so bad, but um, yeah. just out of the way. We asked the bus driver actually if we could see that, but heard about it for years. It's too far away. Right? Yeah, it's a little far away, so, you know, mostly on the Austrian border, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go try is to see that next time. Two, two and a half hours away. Is it? Yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can see that one of these times. And, um, but, and I still got to be here for a beer fest. I still got to see something like that. Here, that's October a beer, right? Yeah, October fest. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. I missed that too. Just a couple, what are we, a couple, a couple weeks too late. September, mid September. Oh man, missed it. Yeah. On the next time. All right, so for eggnog back at home for the holidays, I guess. It's not as cool, but whatever. Yeah. Next time you come, you call me. I will. When you get to my shop, take some. everything. Please take me there. I'd love to go. I'd love to go, man. I love all that stuff. I'm a, I'm a tourist. Even back at home when we travel, I think that's part of the beauty of touring. You know, tour life is just seeing different areas and different places that you grew up you know hearing about or wishing you would ever go to and you know we try to plan those around when we when we tour so we can make it a little more fun and a little more educational for the band members yeah. so we're not just drinking all our brain cells away we're learning stuff too just so you know That's awesome. but yeah so it's cool Some of the stuff you did in Berlin. We shot it, right? yeah, in Berlin. Yeah, we yeah. shot it. We shot it in my hometown of Kingston, Ontario. I was born in Canada. Yeah. So we went back home and shot it there. Obviously, the song was about my, my late father. So I wanted to make it as personable as I could, even though at first I didn't know if I wanted to do that. But um, digging deeper into my into my own issues, I, I thought it was the right thing to do, to, to take a more personal approach on the song. This is probably the most personal song I've ever written. And um, the band giving me a platform to play the song and to perform the song and letting me kind of heal in a different way, um, I think has allowed to um, uh, a lot of proud moments. You know, when you sing the song every night, you see the tears, you see the people sing back. It reminds you that music isn't about you. It's about it's about all of us and the people that want to enjoy it. And um, had an opportunity when we came over with Five Finger. We didn't have the video all done. We had an opportunity to shoot to finish it in Berlin. And, Okay. Jumped at that opportunity, so you know. That was the, the, it was just incredible, you know. We had to get the video done, and we had certain dates that we had to have it done by. And we're like, dude, if we can get it done in Berlin, that would be amazing. And sure enough, you know, we were able to pull it off. And the Brandenburg Gate and uh, you know the uh, the Berlin Wall are all 
making cameos in the Pop Evil video. It's just a yeah. special video, man. I mean, to this day, and I think it's our fastest viewed video to a million. I think it's all, you know, it's over two million now, too. So it's just. It's more than trenches? Uh, no, I think trenches is still a little bit more. I think trenches is over three or something like that, but it's. Trenches has been out longer as well, so I think it's you know it's just uh, the impact that that song's having on people around the world now is uh, is uh, is humbling. I mean, I think that's when you sit down to write a song and you, you know you come from that certain part of the world to think that maybe one day someone across the country will be singing it and listening to it and singing it with you is um it is is kind of a far fetched dream or fantasy for most. And, to be able to see that come to fruition here on this headline tour in Europe is, uh, and so far just Germany, has been uh, has been very rewarding. It's been a very hard struggle to get the band here, and to see this kind of you know come full circle, I think is is huge for all of us individually and collectively as a unit to uh, to expand the brand and inspire us when we go home and make this next record. I mean, when we made this last record. It was a long shot that we were gonna, you know, get to come to Europe. There was no guarantee at that time. And now with this next record, there are there are plans, you know, definitely to come back to Europe mm -hmm. as, as early as next spring summer. You know, hopefully get to do some more festivals and, and um, you know maybe come back after that. You know, and open in with another bigger band hopefully and um, just keep the momentum going. You know, I mean, I've seen a lot of our friends keep it going here and to see them grow in Europe where rock and roll is just appreciated on a different level here. It's um, it's inspiring to us back at home when we go back to make more music. Uh, something we're gonna be able to keep in mind as we write lyrics and write more music. Uh, decided to come back with more culture, um, more appreciation for um, our fans. You know, it's not just, can't wait to get to Germany and have fans, like we see faces, we know y'all, we see your faces, you know, like we recognize y'all just like you know us. We stalk and you stalk us. So we stalk you know, back. Yeah, we stalk back. So it's it's cool, man. It, it's it's fun to um, it's fun to see it grow and, and it's fun to there's no clip notes for how, you know, you're gonna take over the world and try to get out there and, you know, play music for other people in, in, in different places and uh, it's been very um, exciting to see the uh, the strides we've made over the course of these past two years during the course of this Onyx album so. Yeah, yeah I, I guess the audience in Germany, there is an audience, but uh, the bands need to be introduced. So the best way sure. to open up for big bands. Sure, absolutely. Okay, so open yeah, and, and you know, we're hoping with the festivals that that'll be a good way to you know get some good exposure. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then of course, you know, hopefully another tour with um, some more band friends of ours, you know, hopefully. Um, again, out of our hands, what the booking is, but we're all about it. I'm just so blessed that we were able to come to Europe twice in one year. I'll take it. Yeah. It's definitely, for a band that was never able to come to Europe, to come twice in a year, I think is a huge win for Pop Evil. So that's right. Yeah, so it's cold. And it's cold today, so I got my hoodie and my hat on. It's really cold. It's freezing in Munich today. Yeah, today. yeah it was, it's was been real warm in Germany so far. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's supposed to be. What's up, Munich? What's up, man? It's freezing. No, it's all good. Yucks. We're from Michigan. It's fine. It's snowing there probably. Anyways, it's yeah, snow. it was. I think when we um when we got actually before we left, I think there was some snow in northern Michigan. Really? Yeah, yeah, yikes! Don't want it. Mm -hmm. It's good beer weather though. It's good beer weather. Drink yeah. a beer, freeze your tail off, it's walk up to Michigan. Better Glühwein. Do you know Glühwein? What is it? Glühwein. No, I don't know it. No, it's it's a, it's a red and white wine that gets heated up. What? That sounds delicious. I yeah. would love to get some of that. I would love it. Yeah, Say it again. Next time. Glühwein. Glühwein? Glühwein. Glühwein. Yeah. I nailed it. I nailed it. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. 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 Yeah, I love no, it. No one understands. <laughs> so, you you currently writing on the new album or are the songs finished on the uh, album? Uh, guys, are all, we're always kind of writing. I'm just kind of, uh, I think, still in touring mode. I know top of the year we're going to dive back in full circle and we played over 250 shows this year alone so my head's still in touring zone and trying to get some time off. I know after this tour next week we got like three weeks off then we're doing a show we're bringing Run, uh, DMC of Run DMC is coming out to do um, the remix of Trenches with us back in a hometown show of ours.
I don't have to be I don't have to have to be worried about touring and is my voice sore or you know I don't have to worry about any of that. I can put a hundred percent of my mind on the writing process in a new songs. But there's tons of songs we have in the catalog that we've had over the years. But I, I just want to kind of dive in and share where and start fresh and uh, see what comes out. See see what see what I have to say. See what the band has to say. So. Do you usually write separately, or do you write with No, no, no rules. Every song's different. Sometimes you write with everyone, sometimes you write by yourself, and there's no rules, I think, with writing. I think the minute you try to put a cap on it and try to think you have it figured out, you miss it. You miss the point of writing. Writing should be um, something you feel spon spontaneous. I mean, if you feel it, you feel it with one of your partners or your band members, and you know you want to go out there and, you know, express yourself musically with it, then you should be able to do it. I mean, it's, Sometimes it's a lot easier to write with one or two people than to write with five or more people just sitting in a room, somebody sitting there doing nothing. You know, so it's important to kind of, I think, be more strategic about it. And, you know, going to our fourth album, we have our ways and how we write. And I mean, I think that we'll take those ways that we um, that we built on, but be open-minded to you know new different paths to write and find, figure out what we're going to do. Like I said, we've always recorded in Chicago and in the Midwest. We're going to just put ourselves, and we're from the Midwest, so there's a lot more distractions. Family, friends, everyone comes over and everyone wants to hang out because they don't see us all year. So when we get close to home, everyone comes out, you know, so it's a chance to be complacent, lazy, uh, and, and um, you know, I think the music can suffer. So we decided this record that we're going to go away from it all and, um, you know, lock ourselves in rooms and, and uh, you know, let us go home and recharge our batteries let our minds, you know, kind of digest what we did over the past two years and the success we've had and, and um, come back with a vengeance, you know, and, and with, with mental and emotional strength rather than stress. And, yeah. Uh, you know, kind of open But I know we're all tired and worn out and beat up, but, but extremely proud and excited about what we've accomplished. But there's a lot of wear and tear. I mean, I think that since 2006 now, playing 250 shows a year since, it adds up. It adds that wear and tear on your body. And, um, but you know, at the same time, we're blessed to have that. You know, we're blessed to be a band that's that's working in this generation. I mean, to be a rock band working worldwide now is is is, is very rare and hard to do. And any band, if you're a band out there, you can tell you, you guys know how hard it is. You just got to keep pushing and don't let anyone else tell you you can't. It's your band versus the world. Bring it. You know what I mean? You just got to prove it every night. When it's your stage, it's your stage. No one else can change that. You know. And I think that's what we try to focus on. And, and Focusing on what we do live is where true rock fans are born. You can hear that song on the radio or on the, on, on the internet and like it, but when you see that band live, that's when you fall in love and that's when you know you're going to come. And we have a lot of German fans um, that follow us multiple shows and that's how we become friends, you know, we start recognizing. And that's what happened in the U.S., you know, fans would follow us here and there and sooner or later we're remembering faces just like you guys are and, and that's where the real rock community is born and that's where I think uh, the rock community especially it's, it's we support each other not just in music we support each other as people and I think that is uh, what makes touring so special and bands that tour pay the dividends it's a lot of work and it's a lot of um, wear and tear on your body and on your vocal and on your uh, on your uh, emotions but that's where true um that's where the true spirit of rock is, is is safe, man. I mean, I think that's where, as we educate the next generation of listeners about how they can help and how they can make a difference, their one dollar, whether it's on iTunes or whether it's on Spotify, listening to that band, or whether it's, you know, or whether it's coming to the show, buying a t-shirt, you know, all that stuff helps to keep that band fueled to come back again, to come back again. And, 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 um, I think it's important not to just play your instrument up there on stage and go home. It's important to educate, do the little things to make sure that, you know, we can all help each other and whatever those wants and needs are, social media is there in a different way to, um, you know, tell people, hey, I, I forgot my toothbrush today. Next thing you know, you got a fan brought your toothbrush or whatever it is, you know, something as is, is minuscule as that as a, hey, you know what, we got an album where we got a new single out, beautiful. I need everyone just please go buy the single. I don't care if you bought if you want to help us, one dollar, go buy the new single so the label knows that they're giving us money for a music video or whatever it is. Like, if you let your fans know about these things, they're there to help you. And I think that's important to not be afraid to tell your fans what's going on. They know, you know, about how the business is in, in, in a 
transitional spot. But through a transition comes opportunity, and it's those bands that can seize that opportunity that hopefully will make the difference and stand the test of time. And if that's us, then we gotta prove it. We gotta do it. So that's what we're trying to do. Okay. So you, 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 your fan base is more the physical copy vinyl fan base, or? I don't know. To say. I don't know. I don't really focus on it. Our fan base yeah. is is awesome. You know, I think there's, I think our fan base is different depending on people's lifestyles. You know, I mean, if you're in America, it's more run and gun. People don't get the, they don't want necessarily the physical copy, other than the fact that they want the physical copy to get an autograph or to have hanging up and to have in a possession. But you know, most of the younger youth just want it on their iPhone or their or their their smartphone put on their headphones, put on their iPod, bam, they're, they're listening to the music just on the go. Yeah. You know, where others still believe in the CD and the hard. I'm mm -hmm. one of them. I'm one oh, of yeah, them. But, me too. Yeah, I, I'm like, my CDs. I gotta have the copy, you know, and yeah. you see the artwork. And, yeah. and same thing for us making the music, you know, we don't want just make an album and have it go right to digital. We want to do the art, we want to do the pictures, like make the whole package. That you know, the album is called Onyx. We want to show you where the vision came from, not just musically. You know, I think that as any artist has, you have an opportunity to uh, influence your fan base in different ways. And how you go about that is your own prerogative. And sometimes it's harder when labels do not want to, they just want to take your album right to iTunes or right to the digital uh, platform. But you know, I know for most of us musicians, especially in rock, we want that hard physical copy. And yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, to know what the difference between them is. Yeah. I don't really focus on it. I just focus on bringing it live. That's it. Okay. I think the promotion on the internet is more, in my opinion, more on the iTunes stuff than on physical stuff. Well, that's where the labels make more money. Yeah. You see, so they're going to push there. Bands don't necessarily see money from that, so bands will push more of the hard copy because that's going to bring you to the live show. So again, about educating your fan base. But that doesn't mean don't buy the digital copy because if you're buying the digital copy and the label is benefiting. Well, then they're giving back to your band, your favorite bands, in a different way. So it's it's a win-win either way. You know, I always say to my favorite bands, I always buy the digital and I buy the hard copy because what's twenty bucks? Yeah, An I album is usually good. ten bucks. Yeah. You know, you're gonna buy the digital copy, so I have that and the artwork on my phone, and then I have the the hard copy usually autographed. So you know what I mean? I got that just to have in my collection. You know, and and most of our fans, I think, do that. You know, they come back and the album that you get in stores. At least back at home, it comes in the jewel case, and the jewel case usually breaks. But we have the um, we have the um, the digi pack with us usually on the road, which is the cardboard version, which is a little cooler. It's, it looks way it looks way better. I think mine's a cardboard. Is it a cardboard? That, those are the better ones. They don't break, you know. And, and um, that way you get the album art the way the band wanted it, you know. So it's um. You know, it's different ways, and it's it's about the band kind of you know being creative to make sure that the physical copy is. You know, it, it is is unique enough to make it rewardable to, to the fans that are buying the hard physical copies. You don't just want a stagnant product that's just boring looking. You know, you want someone for those people that do buy hard copies to be, you know, excited and to be, you know, proud about when they do buy that and they have in their hand like, wow, this is so cool. You know, like we all did. You all remember those albums we buy that were, you know, amazing, and you open up and you're like, wow, this is the coolest artwork I've ever seen in my life. Forget, I don't even need the record. I'm just going to look at this artwork going on. So, you know, we tried to do our part on, on this album to make sure that our visual and our musical um, could, uh, could entertain people. That's what it is, entertainment. It just happens to be entertainment with rock the way that we love it and the way you love it. That's what I want you to do. How you Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Yes, I want to say thank you to all of European fans, especially right here in Germany. It's Munich today. By the time you watch this, we will already have rocked Munich, Germany, again for the second time. So if you haven't been here to watch us, you need to come watch us live. You got that? It's pop evil, rock and roll in your face. Ah! What's up, y'all? We are pop evil. If you're addicted to music, then get your fix at Music Junkie Press. And all right. Here I come, here I come, yeah!
Come on, come on. 